Howdy! In this last video talking about two-dimensional kinematics, we're going to have a lot of stuff going on. But, as long as you stick to your fundamentals, as long as you stick to the foundation that we talked about in all of our kinematic videos, I don't care what type of problem they give you, this is how I want them attacked. So let's take a look at number three. Here, it says that an enemy ship is approaching your dock at 0.45 meters per second. All you have is a cannon that launches large rocks at a 60 degree angle at 15 meters per second. If you and your cannon are on a tower 8.75 meters above the ship's deck, um, uh, or well, you're 8.75 meters above the ship's deck, for your large rocks to land at the front of the ship, at what distance from the dock should the ship be when you fire the cannon? A lot of crap going on, a lot of stuff, like I'm looking for that D, and it's like, it's, <laughs> yeah, oh, it can get kind of overwhelming. So what I want you to do is just continue doing what we've been doing, okay? Except this time we have two things that are in motion. We have a rock that's in motion and a boat. But let's focus on the rock first, okay? And with a rock, it's moving in both the X and the Y direction. So we had to split up the X and the Y components for that rock. Now, I still need the x naught, the v naught and the x, and the a, and so forth. Now, everything's dependent on where you set up your origin. As long as the math stays consistent with your origin, I don't care how you set it up. But where I think I'm going to set it up is I'm going to go ahead and put the origin right here, right at the right where the floor is on the ship's deck, yeah, this will be x, this will be y, and then positive y going up. And so here is going to be my origin, which means that the rock starts at x equals 0. But the y is going to start at 8.75. Okay, based on my origin, that's that. Now, v not in the x direction. v not in the x direction is going to be 15 cosine of 60 degrees. Your x component is adjacent to that angle. And we know the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, and so this is going to be 7.5. So v naught in the x direction is 7.5 meters per second. And as for acceleration in the x direction, this is always 0 unless otherwise specified. Now, as for v naught in the y direction, v naught in the y direction is opposite my angle. It's also going positive, so it'll be a positive 15 sine of 60 degrees, which we know sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. So let's go ahead and actually put this in our calculator. So we're going to go 15 sine 60 degrees. It's going to be, let's call it 13, right? 12.99. Let's go ahead and actually call that 13. An acceleration in the y direction, because my positive y is pointed up, and gravity is always pointed down. That's why it's a negative, and then 9.8. This is meters per second, meters per second squared. So that's how it is for the rock. So setting up these equations, the x of the rock, okay, once again, for the last time, I'm just going to be setting up these two equations. Also, remember, there's really no need for vf in the x direction, just because it's a constant velocity. That's the only reason why I leave that off. So, for the x component of the rock, it's literally just x naught, which is 0, v naught times t, so 7.5t, and then 1 half at squared, but my, you know, a is 0. Now, as for the y of the rock, okay, as for the y of the rock, that's y naught, 8.75, plus v naught t, so plus 13t, my, uh, plus 1 half at squared, my a is negative, and so minus 4.9t squared. And as for the velocity in the y direction of the rock, this is equal to v naught in the y direction, which is 13, plus v naught t, or sorry, <laughs> v naught plus a t, so minus 9.8t. Okay, cool. So we got our equations for the rock, but that's not the only thing in motion. I got a ship that's in motion as well. But what's cool about the ship is, well, it's only moving in the x direction. It's only moving in one direction, so that's kind of cool. So x naught, v naught in the x, and a. 
Remember, everything is revolved around how you set up your axis. Here is my origin. Positive x is to the right. And so x naught is actually that distance d that I'm looking for, right? At what position does this need to be in order for it to launch? That d is your x naught. So I'll be solving for that d in a bit. v naught in the x direction. Notice how it's moving to the left. Therefore, v naught is negative. It's a negative 0 0.45 meters per second. And acceleration is always zero unless otherwise specified. It also said that it was approaching, you know, it's at a constant velocity. And so, um, here, the x of the ship is going to be x naught, which is d, plus v naught t, minus 0 0.45 t. These are our four equations that we're going to be utilizing. The top three equations deal with our rock, this one deals with the ship. Now that I have this set up, now that I have all of this set up, now let's really read the question and understand what it's asking for. What it says is, uh, for the large rock to land in front of the ship, at what distance from the dock should it be fired? So what I need is I need the x of the rock to equal the x of the ship and basically this needs to occur when the y of the rock is zero, okay? You'd need the x position of the rock to equal the x position of the ship, but specifically you need it whenever the y of the rock is at zero. And so let's go ahead and set these up. And so the uh, x of the rock uh, is going to be 7.5t. And by the way, d is what I'm looking for. Right? That's what I'm trying to solve for. So I need that 7.5t to equal the x of the ship. Well, it's d minus 0.45t. And so solving for d, adding that over to the other side, d is 7.95t. So that's cool and all, but what t value? It's going to be the t value when the y of the rock is equal to zero. And so let's the y of the rock, it's this guy right here. So I need 8.75 plus 13t minus 4.9t squared. I need this to equal zero. Ooh, and how am I going to solve for t? You got it right if you said quadratic formula. Or you can complete the square. Factoring would be kind of tough. You can use your calculator. But you know what? Just get comfortable solving for crazy quadratics equal to zero. And for me, I think it's easiest in this case just to knock out quadratic, using quadratic formula. And if you remember, just as a quick reminder, if you have some at squared plus bt plus c equal to zero, t was equal to negative b plus and minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So it's more just as a reminder but I'm going to go ahead and utilize that to solve for my t. And so t, t, remember your a is, your a is actually going to be negative 4.9, your b is going to be 13, and your c is going to be that constant. So negative b, negative 13, plus n minus the square root, b squared, that's 13 squared, minus 4 times my a, negative 4.9, times my c, 8.75, and all this over 2 times a, that's negative 4.9. Now you're going to get two answers. You're going to get a positive answer and a negative answer. Obviously pick the positive one. Now, to save on time, I already plugged this into the calculator and ended up getting 3.21 seconds. Okay, I already did this earlier because I was like, mm, let's go ahead and do that earlier. I don't want to plug all that into there. And so, but here's the point is, is that this rock will be at y equals 0 in 3.21 seconds. And so, just plug that into there. And so the distance d will be 7.95 times 3.21. Now that, let's actually plug that into the calculator. So we're going to have 7.95 times 3.21 and we'll call it 25, let's call it 25.5. 25.5 
millimeters. And that's what I'm saying. You got so many moving parts. And with kinematics, some of these problems you're going to be faced with are going to be nuts. And so what I really want you all to do is write out your constants, even if your constants aren't given. Even if your constants are what you're looking for, I don't care. Write these out. Set up your equations, and then read and understand the question. Because then from there, this just became a system of equations, um, which I think is just a whole lot easier to attack. And this is how you're going to be doing all of your kinematics.